Modern aircraft carrying millions of people each day around the world. And space shuttles sending humans to the stars is modern thinking, right? These are examples of modern technology, but is there evidence that these incredible achievements existed on Earth thousands of years ago? What if we were to tell you there is? Would you begin to have to ask yourself if we were missing part of the story of the history of the world? Just how could ancient man have possessed knowledge far beyond that of our own history? Where did that knowledge come from? Were people in ancient times visited by beings from the stars that gave us scientific technologies? Or was there a completely lost civilization here on Earth that spanned the globe that has long since abandoned the Earth? It becomes ever more apparent as the years slip past that the possible answer to alien beings visiting the Earth could be a resounding yes. Wait till you hear this. We all know history is replete with tales of gods looking over us humble servants here on Earth, none more so in the stories found all throughout the Hindu belief system. To devout Hindus, the gods are real beings who walked among us. It is described that Shiva came down to the earth on a cloud and stated he was the leader of a different race of beings not from the earth. He declared he was a force for incredible good, but also a force for incredible destruction and the warning must be heard. He had a trident which could annihilate anything in its path, which today by the way is where the name of our nuclear submarine missiles came. Crazy, right? In the Hindu tradition, you have to have destruction in order to have creation. And it may be that Shiva will determine the future of the human race. Roughly 80% of the Indian population practices Hinduism, the world's oldest surviving religion that dates back to at least 5000 BC. And for the Hindu faithful, their gods are not mythological, but are real beings that have, at times, been present here on Earth, which makes more sense and fits in with historical accounts. These many gods and goddesses have different stories and different energies and different principles that they represent, each offering a unique mindset and way of thinking that is all linked in balancing human adaptation on Earth. There is very little doubt these gods existed. This is a part of history that we strangely ignore, yet the answers we are looking for are staring right at us in the face. In general, compared to Western belief, the tangible reality of the gods is much stronger in India. These stories are not simply myth. They are historical records. While in the Judeo-Christian tradition, God is depicted as an all-powerful being, in the Vedic text, Hindu gods often rely on the use of technology, suggesting that history is lost to us. Not only that, but we also are led in the opposite direction of finding the truth deliberately. This has led many researchers to pose the question, is it possible that these religious texts describe not only encounters with the divine, but also with alien beings? There can only be one answer, and we think it is an obvious one, don't you guys? The Western mindset is totally different from that of India, where in India it is almost common knowledge that we have had visitations by higher beings in the very remote past. The Hindu story of the Mahabharata is loaded with references to what seems to be extraterrestrial technology. There are flying vehicles described in great detail, they have got weapons that are voice activated, and they have destructions of civilizations by what seems like nuclear detonation all dating back beyond 12,000 years ago. In the Mahabharata, it is written that one day gigantic cities surrounded the earth, and they make clear differences that these cities were in the clouds, not in heaven, and small vehicles came down from these cities in the clouds. The ancient Indians called these vehicles Vyamanas, and of the Vyamanas, the teachers came out. Does that not just blow your mind or what? 
To us, there is no doubt we were visited by aliens. The Hindu tradition is treasure trove packed with stories of extraterrestrial visitation. Shiva is also called Mahadev. Mahadev means great god. So he is god of gods. He's the head of all gods. And he's also the most powerful god. Shiva has a dual function. One of his functions is destruction. The other one is creation. Without destruction, there is no creation. We are approaching the beginning of a new future for mankind. So in a sense, it's the end of an era and the turning of a new page. Even though Shiva's function is to destroy and he's given that title, God of Destruction, at the same time, he makes it possible to create. So destruction is part of creation. Out of destruction comes life. Perhaps the answer lies not in the images carved upon the walls of a temple or in the words found written in sacred text, but in the awesome power of energy and mankind's increasing ability to harness it as we make our journey back to the stars. Civilizations were much more advanced than we give them credit and literally more advanced than we are today. In our view, we need to take this seriously simply because of the scale of the work. We're looking at monuments that took perhaps a century to build. Even today, we have difficulty in considering such a project. It just boggles the mind. And really, to look at those artifacts and to go back in time and say, how did they do it? We are kind of cracking the lid open a little bit and looking inside to try and see just what happened in our history. It's a question which is a scientific question and you constantly have to ask it. It's a very specific reason why all this stuff was built in stone for posterity so it would last. So that a future generation would have to stumble across these monuments. We are that society who can look at these ancient monuments and finally recognize that all of this stuff was built as a message for us to see that our past is very different than what we're being taught. We may not have the answers, guys, but at least we have the questions. Thanks for watching.